Why do so many artists struggle to earn a decent living? I believe that it's because at a fundamental level, they really don't understand what game they're playing, where they're playing it, or what the rules of the game are. When we talk about art, what you need to understand is that there's no one art world. It's more like a collection of villages. Now, each village with its own game played by its own rules. So if you're not sure which village you're in, which game you're playing, and which rules apply, you're pretty much guaranteed to fail. It's like football. If I were to ask you what were the attributes of a great football player, if you really thought about it, you'd say, well, that depends. Where are you? What version of football are you playing? Are we in England? Then you'd be playing what we in North America refer to as soccer. That would require a very specific set of skills and physical attributes to excel. In America, you'd be playing a very different game with very different rules and very different physical requirements. Now, if you'd spent your life preparing for one game and then tried to earn a living in the other game, you probably wouldn't be very successful. Now, imagine if you weren't even aware that you were playing different games with different rules and you ended up combining different elements of both. You can imagine someone six foot seven inches tall and muscular, weighing 280 pounds, but who worked to develop exceptional ball dribbling skills and amazing cardio, but no explosive power. While each of those characteristics are potentially valuable in one game or the other, neither game values them together in that combination. In my opinion, that's how most aspiring artists are trying to play the game. So first you need to understand in which village you are playing, what the game is, and what are the rules by which the art is judged. So let's look at what the different villages are. I'll keep it to the five main villages. So first, we have the publicly funded galleries and museums. Then we have the world of art auction houses. After that, we have the world of commercial sales with commercial galleries, art festivals, and sales direct to the client. We have the world of art workshops, and finally, graphic design. These are the main villages we need to concern ourselves with when it comes to earning a living as an artist. And we need to decide which village we want to succeed in. So to do that, we need to know what is the game we're playing and what are the rules. So let's look at each of these villages in detail. First, we'll start with the publicly funded art galleries and museums. In this village, the artist is typically paid in the form of a government grant. The artist submits a grant proposal to the governing body, and if it is approved, the government pays the artist to produce the work. The work will be exhibited in a public gallery or museum. The public then comes to view the work. Maybe they pay a fee to the gallery or museum for entry, but the work is usually not for sale, and the artist doesn't receive any money other than the grant. Now, this village is dominated by postmodernism. In this village, competence and skill are not only not required, they are to be avoided at all costs. Postmodernism asserts that there is no such thing as a universal truth or objective reality. There are no values that are inherently morally superior to any other values, and all of our cultural values are social constructs of a corrupt hierarchy. This hierarchy is based on power and oppression, and those at the top use that power to suppress the victims at the bottom of the hierarchy. There's no such thing as competence or skill. These are merely social constructs of the ruling class used to oppress the weak in our society. Now, art, literature, even language are merely weapons used by the corrupt ruling class to dominate and oppress marginalized groups. Competence and skill are themselves just concepts used as weapons by the ruling class and, I, again, are to be avoided at all costs. Now, in the world of postmodernism, every act is a political act, therefore all art is political, and the only valid art 
is that which rails against the corrupt nature of Western society. So this leads to works of art such as Marcel Duchamp's Fountain being hailed in the 1960s as one of the most important works of the 20th century. It was, in fact, a store-bought urinal. Duchamp had submitted the work to a show of the independent artists in New York in 1917. The club's rules stated that all submissions would be accepted. It's claimed that he submitted the urinal basically just to test the board's principles. And he was actually a member of the board. When it was initially rejected from the inaugural exhibition, he resigned from the board. Now, this is one of the first manifestations of the concept that anything could be considered art. It's important to note that, by and large, this concept was soundly rejected by the art world at the time he submitted the piece. Now, we fast forward to the 1960s, and we view the urinal through the lens of postmodernism doctrine. Not only is the fountain art, it is great art. It takes one of the most vile, disgusting objects in our society and claims that it is the equal of the greatest works of art of Western culture. Then we have something that was called the Piss Christ. This was a photograph of an effigy of Jesus on the cross that was suspended in a glass vat of the art as urine. This was an award-winning submission to the 1987 National Visual Arts Competition funded by the U.S. National Endowment for the Arts. We have 1987's Meat Dress, which won a Governor General's Award in Canada, along with a $25,000 prize. This was a dress made out of raw meat that was left in the museum to rot. And then we go to 1996's The Holy Virgin Mary, which is a large painting of a black Virgin Mary, which incorporates elephant dung as well as pornographic images applied as collage. Now, all of these works, and pretty much all postmodern artworks, share the common characteristics of the absolute absence of anything that we would call traditional artistic skill or competence. It also incorporates a criticism of Western society. Now, this is what is taught in many universities and, and college art programs. Now, what you have to realize about postmodernism compared to all the other isms of the art world, like realism, impressionism, pointillism, abstract expressionism, surrealism, all of those other isms, is that those are all movements that describe a type of art and a type of aesthetic when talking about art. Postmodernism is, in fact, a political ideology that you either buy into or you don't. Now, if you do, that's fine. Then you should focus on succeeding in that village. If you don't buy into it, all you need to say is, that's not for me, and move on. There's no point arguing with someone who lives in that village about the relative merits of one village compared to the other. It's like sweet potatoes. My wife loves sweet potatoes. They actually make me gag. There's something about the taste and the texture of a sweet potato that actually triggers my gag reflex. Now, my wife was continually trying to convince me to taste sweet potatoes in all their various forms. She was convinced that I would eventually come to appreciate them. Well, she finally accepted the fact that sweet potatoes are just not for me, and they actually make me gag. I actually have the same reaction to postmodern art. Now, I'm not making any kind of a moral judgment about the validity of the art. I'm just saying it's not for me, so I don't need to worry about it. The next village that I'm going to talk about is the village of the art auction houses, like Sotheby's, Christie's, Heffel's, to name a few. Here, the artist is usually already dead, and the painting belongs to a private collector. So this village is not one we really need to concern ourselves about in terms of making a living there. The work is sold to the highest bidder, and the original owner and the auction house split the proceeds. The actual artist himself, or even his estate, usually doesn't receive any of the funds. In this village, what is valued as great art is art that can command the highest price. Now, this is often influenced by whether or not the artist was an important historical figure. The work may evidence great skill or no skill at all and it may or may not have any deeper meaning. Here, great art 
includes everything from Jackson Pollock's drip paintings to the French Impressionist work to Renaissance work, uh, paintings of any kind of genre. Here, art is a commodity. Now, this village doesn't apply to us because, as I said, usually the artist is dead. What's important is not taking too much into account as far as what is great art when a piece sells in this village. So great art here can be from any of the villages. Then we come to my village, and that is the village of commercial art galleries, art festivals, and direct-to-client sales. In this village, the art's purchased by a client, usually to hang in their home or place of business. In the case of galleries, the artist and the gallery usually split the proceeds, but in art festivals and direct sales, the artist pockets all of the sale price. This village values the lessons learned during the Enlightenment and the Renaissance and respects the artistic traditions of the past. In this village, what is important is how the prospective buyer feels about the art. You can identify great art by what it does. Great art stops people in their tracks. It takes their breath away. It engages the viewer's eye in a visual dance and it draws them in. It makes people covet it. They want to take it off the wall and take it home with them. In this village, great art spans the gamut from high realism to abstract expressionism and everything in between. In order for you to make a living at it, it should also require great skill, compositional knowledge, and creativity. And here's why. If what you do is fairly easy to replicate, then anyone can do it. And if anyone can do it, I can find someone who will do it cheaper. Then it becomes a race to the lowest price point. And as Seth Godin says, that is not a race you want to win. Tie-dye is a perfect example of something like this. If the person who came up with the process of tie-dyeing had kept it to themselves, they probably could have made a fortune. However, once it became common knowledge how to do it, anyone could do it, and it just became a commodity, with price being the only differentiator. You can also see this now to a certain degree with the prevalence of quick, easy-to-learn techniques such as pouring paint, which can provide some pretty striking results. Unfortunately, anyone can do it, so you'll never be able to grow your price point. In this village, the ideal is great work requiring great skill, showing mastery of composition with a unique voice. If an artist can achieve this consistently, then there's virtually no limit to how high the price may reach. The art may or may not have any special meaning, but if it does, that's merely an added value. The work must first meet the great art test on its own merit. It's just like in music. You can enhance the enjoyment of a great album with great album notes, but you can't make a bad record good with great album notes. For someone trying to pursue an art career, that doesn't understand this concept of different art villages, it's a real conundrum. On the one hand, you have people saying that great art is all about skill and competence and draws on the last thousand years of Western civilization and culture. On the other hand, you have people saying skill and competence are something that's to be avoided at all costs. Great art is only about meaning, preferably a meaning that criticizes Western civilization. Or it doesn't have to have any meaning at all. What ends up happening is most artists end up pursuing elements of both villages, and what we end up is a plethora of mediocre art that's neither fish nor fowl. Most often I see work that displays moderate competence while trying to show some deeper meaning. Unfortunately, that type of work is not valued highly by any village. So we get a lot of artists out there trying to sell work that most people don't highly value, and it becomes a race to the lowest price point. I love the litmus test created by artist Scott Burdick for this village, which he calls the dumpster test. And basically it says if someone saw a piece of art lying in a dirty old dumpster, and they had no idea who the artist was or what the value of it was, would they climb down into that dirty dumpster to retrieve it? And I would say that this is the absolute minimum standard that work should be before one starts actually trying to sell their work in this village. Now another village is the village of art workshops. 
Many artists either augment their income or work full time in teaching workshops. Now in this village, the artist is paid by the participants of the workshops. Often the workshop is organized by a local art guild or a group. They'll hire the artist to come teach a class. Now the top workshop instructors can have very busy schedules, booking gigs two years in advance and literally flying all around the world to teach. The top instructors usually have their travel and accommodations paid for and then they charge per person in the workshop. Now instructors usually offer their art for sale to students as well. So successful instructors in this village can easily earn six figures. Now this village values great technical skill and conceptual knowledge and the ability to teach and interact with the class and to create great demonstration paintings fairly quickly. In this village, great art is that which demonstrates a particular concept or technique that's done live in front of the class. Now with the recent advancements in internet bandwidth and the ability to live stream, online workshops are likely to become an even bigger component of this village. Now the final village that I'm going to talk about is the village of graphic design. Now graphic design is the term used what used to be described as commercial art. It is art that's created for a commercial purpose and it includes things like package design, magazine layouts, advertisements, illustrations, web design, etc, etc. This is actually my background. I actually studied graphic design in both high school and college and my dream was to become an illustrator because that was the only specialty where you actually got to draw and paint. Now in my day, the work was done mostly by hand, but now more and more is done digitally. Great work here is work that serves the client's needs. In this village, artists with great artistic technical skill, conceptual knowledge and creativity, coupled with fluency in digital mediums are highly valued. These are the villages that mainly concern us when we think about making a living in art. Now there's quite a bit of overlap between the villages of commercial sales, workshop instructors and graphic design when it comes to the skills that are valued. All of these villages value mastery of technical skill, conceptual knowledge and creativity. So it's not surprising that many famous and successful artists have had their feet in each of these villages during various stages of their careers but there's basically no overlap between those villages and the village of publicly funded galleries and museums. If you see an exhibit of art in a publicly funded gallery that exhibits mastery of skill and conceptual knowledge, it's almost certainly going to be from an artist that's no longer living. Often that artist will even have been castigated by the public art gallery world during his life. Norman Rockwell is a prime example of this. There have been huge traveling exhibitions of his work in major public museums that refused to exhibit his work during his lifetime because in their village he was looked at as an illustrator, not an artist. So what can all this tell us about why so many artists are struggling to make a living? Well, it's no wonder artists are confused over what they should be aiming for. Great skill, no skill, deep meaning, no meaning, beautiful or shockingly ugly, most of the aspiring artists that I meet really want to be a part of and succeed in my village. But they often think that maybe there's something about the postmodernist village that they're just not getting. So they try to interject some of the elements from the public gallery world into the work they're trying to sell. Well, what is it that we end up seeing then? Well, in my opinion, most of the art that I see out there demonstrates anywhere from little to pretty good competence in regard to technical skill, often very little knowledge or proficiency regarding composition, and very little originality or creativity. Or if we do see that, it's coupled at most with moderately competent skill. Often the artist tries to imbue the work with some deeper meaning. Well, what's the problem with this? Well, again, there's no village that values work with all of these qualities. You can't take elements from these separate and distinct villages and combine them together and have any expectation of success. So what do we do? 
Well, the first thing you need to do is pick a village. If you want to succeed in my village, then I can help you. If you want to succeed in the village of public galleries in the museum world, you need to find someone else for that. Now, the thing about this is for those who prefer one village over the other, there's no amount of argument that will convince them that the other is just as valid or has even more merit. I mean, I have my own opinions, but they really don't matter. What's important is to understand what village you want to be in, what is the game in that village, and what are the rules. So the good news is that in my village, all of the skills, concepts, and even creativity required are things that can be learned and improved upon. The bad news is that there are no quick fixes or shortcuts. It takes an incredible amount of dedication over thousands of hours to master all of these things. But if you want it bad enough and you're willing to do the work, then it is not only possible, but I believe almost certain that you can earn a decent living in my village. So how does one succeed in my village? Well, there are two components to success, the art part and the business part. The first part is the art part, and it's very simple, but it is anything but easy. To succeed in the world of commercial sales, you first need to achieve mastery in all of the technical skills and conceptual knowledge. So that means drawing, perspective, light and shadow, color theory, composition, and on and on and on. All of the stuff that goes into producing work that stops people in their tracks, takes their breath away, engages them, and convinces them that you must be in the possession of some divine gift. Once you've mastered all of these skills and concepts, you should be producing art that will allow you to earn a decent living. Now, once you reach this level, there are some things that you can begin to introduce as business solutions that can help you start to increase your earnings. But until you've reached the point where you've mastered the skills and concepts, your earning problem is not a business problem, it's an art problem. There is no amount of business solutions that can fix an art problem. Now, you'll see ads online promoting courses with people saying they can teach you how to sell more of your art, but doesn't even mention the quality of your art. Don't buy into that. Those people are vultures. If someone tells you they can increase your sales without first looking at your art, they are either incredibly dishonest or incredibly stupid. Don't waste your money on that. So let's assume you've reached the point now where you're creating great works of art that show a mastery of skill and concepts, and you're starting to earn a decent living. Well, you're not done yet. Now the really hard part begins. Now you have to find out what it is that you have to say that sets you apart from any other artist. Now you have to begin the search for your own unique voice the ability to create your own world on canvas or paper that is unlike any other artist's world. Now the good news is that you should be able to continue to earn a decent living while you're pursuing that goal. This is exactly where Brooke Cormier is now and has been over the past couple of years. What I can tell you is once you finally achieve that ultimate goal for consistently creating great art with a unique voice, the world will literally beat a path to your door. At this point, the difference between simply earning a very good living and creating actual wealth becomes a business problem with business solutions. So how do we go about mastering the various skills and concepts? What are the actual concrete steps and practices we can implement in our lives to do that? And how do we go about searching for and finding our own unique voice? And what are the business solutions that we can use to scale our income? Well, those are the things that I'm going to be teaching in my course. I hope you're realizing by now that this is not some secret tip, shortcut, or overnight way to start making a lot of money off of your art. This is, in fact, an incredibly difficult journey requiring countless hours of dedication. The good news, or the bad news, depending on how badly you want this, is that once you know what it is you need to do, those who work the hardest at it will have the most success. And that, I think, 
is how it should be. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope you understand a little bit more now about the different art worlds and which village you want to be in. I'm currently putting together an online course on how to earn a decent living as a full-time artist. That should be available before the end of the summer. So we'll be offering some amazing added value offers to our beta pre-launch for my newsletter subscribers only. If you haven't already subscribed, you can do that by going to my website at www.timpacker.com. You can scroll to the bottom of the page and enter your info. I'm Tim Packer, and I thank you for your time. I'll see you next time.